Mr. L. Ravi Chandra, a well-known citizen of Hyderabad, is a designated senior advocate and a columnist. Equipped with his degrees in economics and law, Mr. Ravi Chandra enrolled as an advocate in October 1978. Over the years, he has appeared in a number of cases and writ petitions challenging various policies. A master orator, a witty quizzer, an assertive activist, a lucid journalist, an encouraging movie reviewer, Mr. Ravi Chanda has worn many hats and continues to do so. Above all this, he is a former parent of Little Flower and has remained a loyal friend for several years. Thank you, Mr. Ravi Chandra, for accepting our invitation and being here to motivate and inspire our students and parents as they begin another year of association with our school. I now invite Mr. L. Ravi Chandra to address our participants. Thank you, Anne, for all those very nice things you said about me. I hope half of them are true. Thank you, brother, also for having me over to be a part of this passion of mine uh, of sharing thoughts about how education should be going about in this country, particularly with us. While at one level, uh, there's a lot of uh, theory that we can talk about with the house company. I think today our focus must be as to how are we to deal with the next calendar year, especially for students of class 10, because you know how we all are Marxists. All of us want our children to get very good marks, do perfectly well, because every child, uh, our, what our children, they are an extension of our dreams. What we could not do as perfectly as we wanted to is what we expect of our children. But first, and I hate giving advice. Let me start off with this caveat. I hate giving advice for the simple reason that I hated taking them. So I'm not going to give you any advice. Whatever I give you is just a few straight thoughts. You're free to take them. You're free to say, control C, control V, and throw them in the trash. The first of the many things I want to tell you is, uh, as a parent in this school, I have always trusted the staff more than I trusted my son. And this is not so much to do with my son as it has something to do with the staff of the school. I think every student in Little Flower will have to need whatever he can and thank God for being a student of this August institution. This in itself is a blessing in disguise. How you make use of the blessing is something that you have to decide. Parents, I, I saw brother telling you all about this being an orientation for the students and the parents. I don't really think this is so much an orientation to children as much as it is going to be an orientation to the parents. The children have open minds. They still have dreams in their lives. They are very honest. They don't have vested interests in the system. They don't believe, or even if they do, they have very naive beliefs about life, this and that. Many years ago, when I had small children, somebody asked me what I'd like my children to become, doctors, engineers, whatever. They said, more than anything, I'd like them to become good human beings. And I really take this opportunity to thank Little Flower for making my son a wonderful human being. I'm proud, not because of what he's doing professionally, but because he's turned out to be a wonderful human being. Having said this, what I need to orient parents with is, please, the teacher is not the enemy of the student. Teachers of the school have been teaching for decades. They have all kinds of apples in the basket. They don't like the redder ones. They don't throw away the greener ones. That's not the way they function. 
They have an instinctive methodology by which they know who needs what attention. So please don't come back and say, my son did this. Why did he not get nine and a half? Why did somebody get eight and a half? They know their job. I know we are not living in an ideal situation. Please do not teach your children to swim in ideal, ideal scenarios. Life is not a swimming pool. It's a stream. You are not going to get ideal scenarios in life. Therefore, do not prepare your children only for the ideal situation. You need to understand that if life is not an ideal scenario, the examination paper is not going to be an encore of what the teacher taught you in class. This is not a parrot training session. This is not a nursery where parrots are trained. This is a place where human beings are made. Therefore, Understand the first thing as a parent, begin to completely trust. I'm told this is what Sadhu Asmani keeps saying when I've heard him many decades ago. He said this about a man sitting in a train compartment and carrying his luggage on his head. So when the TT came and asked him, why are you carrying the luggage on your head? He said, I have precious things, so I have to carry it, I have to take care of myself and my luggage. He said, haven't you bought a railway ticket? He said, yes, I have. So he said, along with your ticket, the responsibility of carrying your luggage is out of the railway. So you don't break your head about it, leave your luggage out. Have that complete trust in the teacher so that they will carry the child's luggage. They are greater experts on the psyche of your child than you believe you are. Do not indulge in self-certification. You are likely to make huge errors in that area. Please, the first step and the first very crucial step that you will take as your child moves into those very important milestones of life is to ensure that you trust the teaching staff. Second, we're all trying to grow. None of us, the best of experts in the field of medicine and science, the best of educationists, the best of politicians, and I'm not talking about the American president, all of them are groping with what needs to be done in this kind of a scenario. Thank you, stars. You're not in a school where your principal is Donald Trump. So understand that as we grow, we are bound to make errors. There are going to be technical glitches as we go ahead in this kind of virtual schooling that we have. The boys are going to miss all the fun. No new dresses, no new books, no new water bottle, no new uh, canteen, no old friends meeting once again, no basketball court in the afternoon to run around and make mischief, no new names for the teachers. I know all this fun. That can, that can wait, that can come back. August, September, we'll do all that fun. But you know what's going to happen? By July and August, if you've done all your work, then I'm sure Anne and the other teachers around who are going to be here, I'm going to give you one month of fun when you come back to school because you've done all your work. So understand when you have no choice, stay back and make this opportunity, be done with all your academics so that once you come back to school, you'll have a big time picnic in school. That, I assure you on behalf of brothers, though brothers not told me that. So be sure that you do all your work with that kind of sincerity that doubles up for the lack of physical reaction or physical interaction between you and the class. The world over, there is schooling through the virtual world. So we're not doing something that's happening uh, before anybody else. How many of you have seen Maya Bazaar? Put your hands up, your mom and dad will tell you Maya Bazaar. We had the first uh, Google box because Savitri opened it and she saw the world. So there's nothing new about it. So we are only renewing our ties with the past. I know all of you love technology. I know all of you have smartphones. I know what all you do with our smartphones. Mama and Papa think you're a very, very good boy. So you're only doing math. How many of you are playing PUBG on it? Be everyone. So don't sound... Coy. We know that 
technology has come to stay. Those who do not come to terms with technology will become the dinosaurs. Do you want to be the dinosaurs or do you want to be one of those smart lions and sheep? This is your choice. Again, again, marks can wait, ranks can wait. They don't happen in due time. Believe me, some of the best students are not the ones who got the ranks and stood up for victory span. The ones who need to be successful in life are the ones who need to learn to be methodical with them. The ones who want to be successful in life are the ones who need to be accountable without being supervised. This is a great opportunity for you to learn without having to exhibit. Unfortunately, we have a system where finally your value is decided by numericals. Our 10 months of education is put into three hours, but that's the way life is. Until we find a better alternative, we'll have to work with this. So please ensure that you take, make best use of this great opportunity. Like other schools, they can also send me only collect tuition. We'll send you a notebook every month. You can sit at home and read whatever. Then we'll conduct tests. We'll give you marks and you go more. That's not what some schools particularly in the are doing. Understand they are risking their security, their welfare, their holiday, everything. They are preparing much more than all of you are doing because they want you, who brother called the ambassadors of they want to train good ambassadors. They don't want to train successful. When you're good, you will become successful. But when you're successful, you need not necessarily be good. So understand that this whole experiment is to keep you in touch, to ensure that that piece of iron is not kept in the sun, rusting in the monsoons that come. Here is a polishing mechanism. Please make as much use as you can with it. Parents, well, please be seated. Do not treat your children like some performing monkeys and insects. They are not the ones who have to do the trapeze art. They don't have to joke. They don't have to get the smile. They're not the Baba Black Sheep boys. The moment some parent comes, Baba Baba, say Baba Black Sheep, see how good my son is. Think, get over this syndrome. Please ensure that the world will know your son or your daughter by how good they are as human beings, not by the amount, whether they got 96.7 or 98.2 in math and physics in 10th class. It helps, I'm not saying no. Unfortunately, numericals have their value in an otherwise derailing value system. I know all of us want our children to, at the end of one year, go to one of those concentration camps which we call uh, IIT training, MSET training. And I, I won't name those particular institutions. China, you know, China is not a very popular name these days, so we won't go there. But yes, uh, I'm saying that every parent wants his child to become a very good student and get 99. I wish all of us could. I wonder how many of you parents got 99 and 100. When they were, when you were there, understand that your children are not getting 99 and 100, they are going to carry the 95, 94 gene in their body. If you come to terms with that, I think the world will be a much better place for your children. Understand atmosphere, confidence, hope. Install these, install these in your children. You'll see the plant grow healthier. Walk on a road and you'll see a lot of trees that take years of age before they flower. The trees are still of great value. Don't value all trees, whether on the basis of the fruits they have. Understand even the mango is seasonal. Don't come and tell your child, the monkey is climbing up the tree, the fish is not. Therefore, the monkey is a better animal than the fish. If your child does not do what his classmate is doing, it is your responsibility to see what is it that he is better at when compared to the neighbor, rather than saying, 
my monkey, my fish can't climb trees, my monkeys can't swim. Find out whether you're giving birth to a monkey or a fish. That's your responsibility. I also believe that as parents, when you are a witness to the adolescence of children, 14 years, 15 years, you see them for a very short while in the day because very often you're working. Very often if you're not working, you're still working, watching the television. If you're not watching the television, you're creating a television scene that we need to train. So in the midst of all this, the teacher knows the child because she has spent N years and has seen him through a critical lens without a parental lens. While a teacher carries all the virtues of a parental lens, she has certain other concave and convex lenses lens on the basis of which her readings are far more accurate. And when I say her, I'm not taking away class teacher of class uh, 10 D. He also, right? Uh, do parents, well, I say young future, do not use kid gloves on them. That's Norwegian style. I think in class 10, you can afford to be tough and strict with them when it comes. When your little kid says, I want a Nike pair of shoes, you indulge. When your son says, I want a pizza, you indulge. In the family where one pizza could cost 500 rupees for one evening, you're willing to do that. So don't come back and say, I don't have the technology, I don't have the bandwidth at home to run a class. Doesn't make sense. I think in every parent has a social parental responsibility in investing in a child's education. That's the best gift you can give your child. Do not say, I cannot afford. If you can afford a child, you must afford its education at the level at which it is being extended in the school you chose your child to be in. I am told none of the children in class 10 were given an invitation by the school saying, please come and join my school. This is in plus two, you get those invitations saying, come and join my institution. I'll put your photo after two years. This doesn't happen in school. So you applied, you stood in those long lines or you used your nice influence or your smartness to get a seat into the school. You came, it was on your own volition. So please understand the school is standing up to those standards on the basis of which you chose it, those standards on the basis of which you want your children to grow up. So do not nitpick. Ensure that your children are before the virtual world learning, learning what the school is. What all they want to learn outside of it is between you and your children. Understand, the virtual world, like any other, is just as good as it is dangerous. But also understand that unlike in other ages, your children go through a socio-biological spell when they are 15 and 16. It's very different, very undefinable, and very adventurous. You trust them completely at your own risk. Understand the teacher will run a class. She will ensure, she or he will ensure, that the child is there, technology is there. I'm not a technology man. I, I can't even spell technology correctly. I don't know if there's an A or an O after the end. So that's my knowledge of technology. But then, ensure that your child's class is monitored by an adult in the house. You don't have an adult. You know, you have those famous people for whom you send these children after school hours tuition teacher, ask her to come and sit here and monitor this. That's the best way they will earn their money. Or get, uh, there are enough people who come and sit who don't know education, but they know blue film from mathematics. So make them come and sit when your child is before the monitor and learning the classes. Second example. Please, second example. You can't have a dirty house and say, better improve your computer. You can't say, I'll go to sleep whenever I want because I'm working from home. The children get up at 8 o'clock because classes are beginning. No. The Mahatma, of course, I know he's out of fashion. 
we have newer ms from gujarat who are popular but uh, i still believe that uh, he said something very substantial and impact making for the world said be the change you want to see around you. if you want your child to be a good person if you want your child to be even a successful person please give him that energy by vision and not by lectures lecture even i can give i am nice ac room brothers given me is given me one nice extra cup of coffee for me to last till 6:15 so i had all that you will have to understand every day before you go to bed and you have your cat wings or your nine wings that what is at stake future of your child pivotal to every decision you make all the nitpicking you do all the bottlenecks you identify all the problems you see answer all of them by answering one question what is better for my ward for the next academic year walk in that direction understand this is not as i said an ideal situation especially for a school that contaminates with warmth but it is today refrigerated into a virtual world by virtue of something that mankind did not expect we are all going through nature creation bigger institutions better infrastructure institutions are fumbling doctors are dying doctors are suffering from the virus they are supposed to be curing others of i heard about bigger institutions i'm not going to name them they are relevant have you heard about the chief minister's office having corona virus all these teachers could have told brother brother thank you very much i for your salary and rather sit at home and have samosas i and i have a friend of mine who started a new cooking uh, channel i'll go see that and make nice tambran basam instead of doing that they are sitting and working they are preparing lessons and unlike many years they don't repeat last year's lessons and say control c control v paste it and push it on to you they don't do that not here they have one villain in the house who supervise everything for them so in the in this backdrop learn to respect because if you don't know to respect what your parents are doing for you in education and the parents and children don't learn to respect what the teachers and the institution is trying to do for them believe me one year if 10th class marks are not great little class marks going to fall down at all but you will have only one chance to do your 10th class you have much more at stake than each and all or everyone in this institution at the other side of the fence what is at stake is you your future and your future is not only about that double digit triple digit mark that you get in the progress card it's about how much you acquire parents please make your children understand i don't know why i'm making an assumption you do know it that this is the most impressionable age what they learn now is what they will remember about forever i learned in class 10 and the trigonometrical values which i can rattle off now i can tell you how sin cos tan is old harry and his old aunt because i learned it in class 10 what i learned last year i don't remember of course i didn't learn anything last year that's another story i can afford the luxury all of you 10th is important because it's a minus if government had said 11th they won't have forced you they would have I would have had us the eleventh class students instead of you. Right or wrong, all of us function in a system. You cannot have Virat Kohli coming in a T20 match and saying my best bowler is too good. He is going to bowl seven overs whether you like it or not. That can't happen. And that's not the way. That's not the way rules of the game are played. They are becoming more and more stringent. Now you can't even spit on your ball. So be careful. No one intended there. I'm only telling all of you: you need to work hard. 
you need to adjust to a new environment in which you're going to work. Parents, please trust the teacher first. Create a sense of trust in the children. Don't get too much on that. Not because your children are bad, but because their age is susceptible. Please keep a careful, hands-on watch on what your wards are doing. And don't look at only their marks to find out what they're studying. Whether they are studying is more important than how much marks they have got while studying. Because if they get into the first habit, the second will take care of it. But if they get only the second and they don't have the first, sooner than later, the slips will show. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity. Uh, brother, I wish you all the best. I know the school has a habit of success. I know it perpetuates itself. I know you value education and you value value education. And that is your USP. Your entire effort now is a great thrust in that direction. A job well intentioned, a job well executed is a job well completed. All the best and hearty congratulations in anticipation. Thank you very much.